Hey everybody, how are you today? Let me know where you're watching from, if you are live here, if you're not live and you're watching the replay. Don't forget to comment the word replay for a chance to win some prizes, a $20 gift card from Essential Stencil. And if you're joining me live, um, you will get the chance at the end of our live to win a $20 gift card also. So, how are you today? We've been, there's two days left. I've got that in the description of our live. Two days left in order to get the pre-order for the bundle, the patriotic bundle that Essential Stencil, um, we've been showing you all this week. Hi Rhonda, hi Tracy, how are you? Uh, Cassie's here, so you must be getting your notifications, hopefully. And um, yeah, there's two days left if you don't have your bundle yet. There's two days left to be able to get it as a bundle. And with that as a bundle, you're saving 20% off all of the stencils altogether. There's 17 stencil sets. That's sets, so there's like multiple stencils within a set. Tracy, thank you so much for the sprinkle. So um, thank you for sharing our live. Whenever you do that, that lets other people on Facebook know that we are live and about to do a DIY craft project. Today, you can use my code iRestoreStuff to get a further 10% off the bundle or just of anything at Essential Stencil, the transfers, the brushes, all of the things. So, hi Linda from West Virginia, how are you? Thank you so much Bonnie and Dominica for sprinkling. Um, all right, so I am going to be stenciling a few things today. I've got a board, it's just a plywood board and I'm going to be using items or stencil sets from the Patriotic Bundle. So, but I'm going to be using them, um, I'm from Australia, if you couldn't tell already. And so I'm going to do some things that could relate to my country or that could just be used for any time of year. So I like doing things like that as well so that we can take a themed bundle and take things out of it that could still be used for other times of the year. So I'm also, I've also got this notebook plain notebook that I found. It's just um, got, you know, faint lines in it. You could use it as a journal. I'm going to be putting a stencil on that. And if I get time, I did also find this cloth pouch that I would love to do a transfer on. So there's a couple of different transfers that I've got out. Haven't made my mind up yet. It could be patriotic or it could be a sea turtle. So we'll see what fits on my little pouch there. It's just a zipped canvas, uh, I guess you would call it canvas or burlap. No, not burlap. I don't know what you call this fabric. It's just, uh, we would call that here canvas kind of a fabric. Anyway, calico is what we actually call it here in Australia. Hi Mary, hi Melissa and Jenny. Someone's got a warm day in California and their name just disappears as, I, as I'm looking at them. Muslin, yes, Erin says that's what they're called. That's what you would call it there. All right, so let's get started. And a lot of you have already seen the Patriotic Bundle. If you haven't already, you can check out my live from last week or some of the other ambassadors have showed all of the sets. But I don't want to go through and show you every single thing um, of the sets today. Um, I'll just show you some of the ones that I will be working on. I know last week I showed you the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and how you could use that. Has anyone made the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh no, of course you haven't. You haven't even got it yet. But I'd love to see someone doing that as a porch board, but I did it as a scroll. Um, so it's kind of like a scroll type of thing. So you can have the kids, you can hang it up in the homework room or something, have them learn the pledge. So that was a fun one. And that has been really popular apparently. So you can order the sets singly. Um, but it, it, there's two days left for the bundle, which you will absolutely save 20% off the entire bundle if you order it that way. Plus use my code, I restore stuff and get a further 10% at the checkout. And also there's um, deals with the bundles. You get a set of free brushes if you order on the app. And if you order on the app or the website, you get another $20 gift voucher just for ordering the bundle. So yes, Bobby, you're still waiting for your stencils. So those of you who have ordered them, the shipping estimated ship date is the 19th of April. So you'll get that. All right, one set I'm going to use today a little differently is the, it's called US Combat Boots. And it's got the US Boots. That's been popular with some of our ambassadors. We've seen them do this one. 
Oh, uh, it's got the flag in the background. Have I got that upside down probably? It's got the flag in the background and the boot area for the boots. This is longer than our regular stencil sets have ever been. It's, this is our regulars go are 12 by 16. I think this is 12 by 20. So it does stretch out a little bit further. And with that, you also get the boots background and then the boots which layer on top of that. That's like it's the laces and things like that. So it gives you the uh, details of the boots. And then there's the stars which go on that section of the flag <clears throat> in the background once that's done. They all come, these layered stencils all come with different crop marks so that you can line up your stencils exactly. So you see these little crop marks here. Don't stencil over those. You need to tape those off um, so that you're not stenciling over them. They're there just to line them up, if I can do that back to front and upside down. So that's what that's for. So today I'm going to just use the boots part. I'll be using this layer and this layer. So don't forget to um, save our lives, if you can do that, I think, that you can bookmark them or something like that, or get save the link when we're finished. And um, They'll always be here on the Essential Stencil Facebook page in their video section. You can see the lives. Um, oh, Michelle, you were unable to find the flag cross for some reason. Are you talking about this one? This is the God Family Country three-pack set. So it's got God Family Country. And you may have seen it as this, One Nation Under God, if you're just looking for the image of it in the bundle. But it does have the cross in there. And it has uh, God, family, country stencil in there as well. So it's those three stencils. So if you missed seeing it, it's probably because you saw this pictured, but that's what it's called. And there's a little bonus one in there for the cross flag that's got the stars that go over the top of it. I was thinking of using this one today too. So um, there are a number of things I could do on my board, and that was one of the things I was thinking of is to use this stencil here and do the one nation under God up the top and then do the cross down underneath with the flag behind it because uh, this kind of long board suits that kind of a stencil but when I saw the boots I thought of an idea for that let me just get my tape measure because I think I measured it earlier but I think it's 14 oh yeah 14 inches by 7 inches is my board so it's not going to fit the boots but you know that I always try and do things that don't fit the boards that I find. <laughs> so we're going to do half boots on here. We're going to have half of a boot and let's just get started so we can see what we're working on. All right, and then I might leave some little clues around. <laughs> you may be able to see them, you may not, to be able to see what else we're going to be working on today. So that is from the Combat Boots uh, stencil set and we'll be working on some other things today. So. Essential Stencil has put the link right there in the description of the live of what we're working on today. Let's see. Whoop, there we go. Try and get this. Oh, this way. Got to move across. Oh, did you see a little clue there? Um, just trying to get this at a good angle. Okay, so I've got my board which is 14 and a half by 7. I'll try and catch your comments here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to use the boots stencil and I'd like to have this one with these uh, dog tags. See, one boot's got the dog tags hanging from them. I'd like to have that one featured in there. So again, we've got these registration marks which line up the stencils with each other. So what we want to do is put the background on first and I'm going to put something up the top here so stay tuned for that and don't forget to join in the conversation guys I love to see your oh Pam says I would love to see a camo demo did you see that little sneaky look in here of what I might be doing on my notebook I'll be doing that in just a minute after we've done this one or we'll get started on this one you know what I forgot to bring out is my hair dryer. Tori, are you available? Tori? Oh no, she might be. Oh, sorry, could you just grab my hair dryer and have that? Thank you. 
just it helps to dry things quickly. And thankfully Tori's here <laughs> at this moment in time. All right, so I've got a few different colors out here for the background of the boots. And I did look up army boots and what color they are and, and I, specifically Australian army boots, which is where I'm from. And they're kind of a bit between, well, they vary. Sometimes they vary in color. They're kind of more of a khaki, but more of a brown khaki. So I've got fusion colors, Woodwick and Everett, which is a darker green. This is kind of a lighter brown. Thank you. And I might just go a little bit between those. Now we've got a great big area here. So I'm going to be using our really large brush, which is a 7 8 inch brush um, for this. I think I'll start with the green and I will also just do a little bit of taping. Yes, these are great, these boots, aren't they? So I'm obviously not going to get all the boots in, but I do want to have half a boot hanging, well, not even half, a quarter of a boot hanging off the edge here. Now I'm going to be careful because I don't need that registration mark just now. I am going to tape it off or what I will do actually, uh, this is how I'm going to line up my registration marks. And I thought I had a, <clears throat> a pen here, but just bear with me. It's one right over here in the drawer. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of tape underneath the registration mark on the side. And that way, oops, it just has to be a little bit more where the cross is. So this lace is coming down beside it. We've got the registration mark there. And I can use a pencil or a pen because it, um, and I want to just mark that. You could do it on your painted surface and then erase it later if you're using a pencil. Um, but I just thought I'd do that. And then when we line up, when we take this off and line up our next stencil, it'll be right there for us to see. Okay, but now I want to actually tape over it. Well, I probably don't need to because we've got the tape underneath. But I did get a little bit, I did get a, um, there is a bit on the end. So, uh, no, I don't think I need to. We won't. We won't. <laughs> because if I stencil over that, I'm not accidentally, if I'm going over here and it's too close, um, the blue tape underneath will protect it. All right, so I'm going to use Fusion's Colour Everett. Oh, and I forgot to open my jars properly before. I'm going to slam it on the table and that helps to open if you slam it uh, directly on its lid. You can avoid the splatters. Now this is a nice olive, well it's even darker than olive, it's a, almost a dark khaki green. So that may even just be great for doing this. Um, All right, so I've got my brush. I'm going to dip that just into the lid there. And I've got quite a fair bit on my brush. So because we've got this huge space here, I'm not even going to offload that like I normally do on my card stock. I'm going to offload it in the middle. I don't want to touch the edges with a brush with this much paint on it. So I'm literally just going to offload my brush in the middle of the design until and even over here we can do until we've got like not very much on the brush and then I can go around the edges and this center bit is going to whoop, I've got that bleeding under now oops because I didn't I've still got a lot on the brush <laughs> the brush goes so far I mean the paint um, goes a long way so now I'm just kind of coming in from the edges and I do want to get those bits there. So that bit's all done. Now I can pull this from the inside because I've painted the base in white. It's Fusion's color casement. I painted a few boards all at one time. So uh, if you um, paint a lot of signs, it's great to get your boards all lined up and just do a whole bunch of backgrounds at one time. At least get like a base coat or something on. So this, if you've just joined me, welcome. <coughs> I 
join in the conversation and say hello for a chance to win some prizes at the end of our live. And these may or may not need, depending on, oh, I think I lifted that up also, I've got a little bit off the edge there. So I'm just doing the combat boots stencil set without the flag behind it on a skinny board. So I just wanted to highlight an army boot. And you know in Australia, which is where I am, we have our uh, Memorial Day kind of a patriotic day for our veterans. Uh, on the 25th of April, so it's coming up in a couple of weeks. So this one might be appropriate for us at this time. Uh, minus the US flag, and I would, could possibly add an Australian flag if I wanted to, but this one's going to be honouring our heroes, this sign. And uh, we call it Anzac Day. So Anzac Day is the 25th of April, and it's Anzac is A N. Z A well you say Z <laughs> I say Z oh my goodness Z A C it sounds weird saying Z after you've learned in in school to say Z here in Australia so strange anyway um, ANZAC stands for Australian New Zealand Army Corps so that uh, is what our patriotic remembrance kind of Memorial Day Veterans Day I suppose you would call it okay uh, so I've got a little bit of bleeding under the stencil down there because I wasn't really too careful about how I was putting on how I was putting on my boots. I was about to say that's funny. How I was uh, I had a little bit too much on the brush, but see how I loaded it in the center first, and then that kind of saved us a bit of time. I think I've got something on the back of there, but that's okay. All right, so I'll clean that off later. Pop that on the ground and then we've got our highlighted details of our boots that we're going to go over the top. I'm just making sure that's properly dry there and I may just get a little plastic bag to pop my brush in in case we use that colour for something else. And our next layer is going to highlight the details and the laces and all of that kind of thing. Let's so grab my dryer. Just plug that in. <laughs> Vic says, putting on your boots made you giggle. Yes. Okay. So, how's that looking so far? It looks like a silhouette. You could almost use that as a silhouette for you. Um, see, that's just, I'll show you that close up where it just bled underneath the stencil. So just be really careful for this part of the stencil here where there's a little bridge gap in the middle, in between. Um, it's quite thin and sometimes that can just move back and forth as you're painting it. So you've just got to be super careful with your brush to just be very gentle around those areas. And there's also a little bit of a fuzzy edge along here I can see. Um, we could fix it up later. I'll just see what it looks like. It may not even be noticeable once we get all the, the other details in there. <clears throat> Diana says it makes us all feel better when we have accidents on our lives, I know. Keeping it real. Okay, so remember we've got this little registration mark here and I've got my blue tape where I put a pencil mark where the registration, you can see the cross there. So I just have to line that up. If I can see it through here, you could just line your, your boots up but um, then it gives us a more accurate if we line it up with the registration mark. And as well as that, <clears throat> so I've got it where I think it is. Um, you could also layer this on top and line up the registration, make sure you correct and line up the stencil to where it was. So, yep, and there we go. So with that all lined up, I want to add my tape back again so that it doesn't move anywhere. I could put another tape down the bottom if I wanted to. And if, you, if you've if you got your uh, 
stencil where it goes over the board, you can roll a piece of tape up, put it underneath and just tape it down like that so it doesn't move very far. Okay, <clears throat> so I thought of, instead of doing white, I might do, you know what else I had? Oh, here it is, a bit of a copper metallic. This is a fusion mineral paint metallic color for these um, dog tags. I thought that might be fun. <coughs> or you could add a little bit of that to this woodwick color and make it sort of bronzy. Bronzy metallic. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I'm using at the moment, this is cobblestone. It's sort of a grayish off-white. Just thought I'd use that to highlight all the details. But it may be a little bit, because I think that it wouldn't highlight it as well if I went over it with a lighter color so much. Maybe it would. Anyway, we'll go over it with the white and see what happens. So I'm going to use just sort of a medium brush. Let me use one. It's a 5 8 inch brush and I'm going to use this to do these details. So this is cobblestone. If you've got your pen out, you might need to... Some people like to have their pen and paper handy because we mention things here and then you can write down like the colour of the paint, whatever. I do have a code. You can use my same code. I restore stuff at Fusion Mineral Paint and get 10% off there. Um, and I can give you that link if you would need it. Oh, so many people are loving the uh, patriotic bundle. Donna says, do you have a beige? I do, but I didn't bring it out. So I will just do this for now. Like, uh, I think I'm going to start down here. And we'll see. If this colour doesn't suit, then I can maybe go over it with that brown woodwick colour or mix a little bit of that. We'll see what this looks like. You can always go over it if it doesn't work out, hey? And I'm just kind of giving it a gentle rub over. And we always offload the brush to make sure that we have a, a dryish brush when we're doing our stencils. too much on my brush so I'm kind of pouncing it a little bit to make sure I can get it spread all around and then I can go swirl it which will give it a nicer coverage instead of little speckly spots from the pouncing. Okay these are the dog tag little bits let's see how they turn out. So when now that I've got hardly anything on the brush I can do this swirling and it won't go underneath the stencil because there's hardly anything on the brush. It also gives it sort of a a better coverage I feel. Okay, got a little bit more on my board here so I'll just get that off and again just kind of swirl it around in all of the little detail bits and I will have to go back already and get some more on my brush. Now it's a lot better, I always say it's better to go over and get more rather than have too much on your brush and have to um, get those fuzzy edges that we don't like underneath the stencil. So this is the colour cobblestone. It's an off-white with sort of grey undertones. So I thought it might blend nicely with this darker army green colour that's underneath for the boots. So many um, people commenting about different people they know and love who served in the military. And I had, my grandfather served in the Australian Army and he was in the telecommunications part of the service and he served in New Guinea and in Australia. Sandy says you like this combination of colours on the boots. Yeah, I hope it 
turns out nice. When I take the stencil off, I'll be able to tell <laughs> how well it goes with it. But I do like that colour green. It's a really dark, dark green. In fact, this is a furniture paint. If you haven't seen Fusion Mineral Paint, I've used the colour Everett, E-V-E-R-E-T-T. -T. And um, you can get 10% off the Fusion Paint as well using my code I restore stuff over at fusionmineralpaint.com and I've got forward slash, I think it's dot com or dot shop forward slash Sharon, but I can give you the link if you need that one um, to use my ambassador code there or my affiliate code. All right. It looks great on furniture too. So let's have a look at that, see how that turned out. Oh, that's not too bad. I think I like that that detail. You could make it um, a colour that's a little bit more in tone and in similar, but I'm getting lots of hearts there, so I think you guys might like that. And now that we've lined up that registration mark, we don't really need that anymore. We can leave that off. So now with these tags, I don't know, I felt like I kind of wanted to add a bit of copper in there see how that might look. This is from the stencil set Combat Boots. So this is Fusion Mineral Paints Copper Metallic. They have a lovely range of metallics. I'll add this in here. I might even, I'm just going to add this green and the copper to that. Now I'm not sure which I should, <coughs> yeah I'll have to use this one again to go over that and it'll probably just be this area that's white that will show up as the copper. Just going to try that out, see what it looks like. Now, however, I need a little bit of, so these are the instructions, I'm just using, going to use this as a little blocker for my, for my brush. Should I add that or just do a clean brush? I think I'll just do a clean brush. <coughs> and just using a little tiny one. Lining that back up again to where the white paint was because that's the area of these dog tags that I'm going to create in a copper tone. Um, Rhonda, the colour for the boots was Everett, E-V-E-R-E-T-T, -E -E Everett. It's lovely. Oh Vic, that's a great tip. I love it. When you open your paints, rub Vaseline around the threads before putting your lid back on and it does prevent paint from drying out around the outside lid, especially chalk paints. It does. I would be just very careful about getting any of the Vaseline in the paint, okay, because that will um, contaminate the paint and it will wreck it. So just make sure it's just on the very outsides there and just be very careful if you're wiping your brush off on your paints, just be careful not to let that get in there. So that's the only caution I would have with that. <clears throat> okay, I've, I've got a little bit of copper on my brush. Let's see what happens with this. I've used my offloading technique and I'm just blocking off the areas outside the dog tag and just watching very carefully as to how that goes on. I can do this side mostly. Oh, it's hardened a little bit on the lid. It's not as nice when it's all hardened. And now I think we've got the chain up here. That could do with a little bit of copper as well, right? And I think I've got it on the lace a little bit, but that's okay. You could always touch that up with my detail brushes. And then just using the the um, brochure here, <laughs> or any, you're probably better off getting a piece of cardboard, cardstock, <coughs> if you need your brochure, then don't use it. <laughs> um, and then move it around so that we're blocking off the areas beside here that we don't want to paint in this copper tag color. I don't know, they're probably more bronze, aren't they? But 
If you've got bronze, you could use bronze or any other metallic that you think. Antique um, Fusion's got a lovely one called Antique Gold. That would be nice too. <coughs> Okay, heading around the corner and just get this last bit here. Oop, I nearly got it on, I think I've got it on the boot beside it. <laughs> See if I can do that better. There we go, that's cute. I don't know sometimes this doesn't turn out as well on video but you'll be able to see the probably the shimmer of the metallic if I deflect the light a little bit is that the word there we go so that's cute I like it you could even be inscribe something on there if you're really careful with your with a fine tipped sharpie or something like that okay so now we're going to add our words on top now I do I do have some fuzzy edges you can see just here on the green and over here on the laces they may not be able to be seen from a distance but it annoys me because I see it's imperfect if you wanted to try and get rid of that you can fold a little tiny piece of sandpaper and just go right along the edges like so and being careful not to sand right through your white um, <coughs> to the wood because you just want to sand enough to get uh, the fuzzy edges disappeared. Disappear them. So that's one way of just getting rid of them. The other way is to just touch up your uh, those edges with a little bit of white paint if you've got a steady hand and can get that white across. But I think that's even better already. So just on the inside there I haven't done up here that's a little bit more fuzzy but I've done down there so <clears throat> that works well so there's your tip for that it's just getting a piece of sandpaper this one's a 240 grit I just folded it so that you've got a, a sandpapered edge right there and just back and forth like that on there all right so let's go on with our next little bit of this and that is to add something else now I did think so this is the set American veteran and I love that and I also love that they have a woman veteran set so these are both sets of six in fact the woman veteran one has an additional little bonus to make that sunflower on the back here into a flag sunflower which is so cute it has a bonus there oh look it's going to show you and now it's stuck to, <laughs> stuck to the packet packaging so you would put the sunflower down and then you've got the stripes and then you've got the stars and so that creates that little miniature layered set within this whole set here so that is definitely worth getting and obviously all of this comes in the bundle um erin says you've got a hard time trying to decide what stencil to use when you first get them i know okay so for this set i've got the american veteran so this is the one with uh, male figures in it and I've got the boots here a miniature version of the boots and I thought that would also look cute on the bottom of this sign if I didn't do these larger ones and then I saw the larger ones I just love the way that they fill out and overflow off the sign so instead of just one little sign and then one lot of words up the top you can have a whole bunch of things so uh, we've got remember our heroes this is in the set as well so we've got six stencils in this set it's called American Veteran. We've got Remember Our Heroes. And I'm going to be using just the words up the top here. So I'll tape off that part there and just put the Remember Our Heroes on here. Also in the set, we've got the Thank You Veteran with the flag right there. We've got the um, man in uniform hat. And we've got the All Gave Some, Some Gave All stencil I should put this against the background and then there's this little one here if you want to stand behind that tree just feel free to stand in front of them okay so that's a pack of 
six in that set. And these are all available for pre-order singly, but if you do get the bundle, you get 20% off having bought the bundle plus an extra 10% off using my code iRestoreStuff. And you get a also a $20 gift card from Essential Stencil just as an added bonus. So here's my boots. How are they looking so far? And I've got some tape here that I can tape this down carefully. I've made sure that's kind of centered here, centered there. <coughs> Yes, Bobby says it's very hard to tell what to use first. Um, I'm going to turn my, oh, is that going to work? Maybe not. I'm going to try and make it turn a corner here because it's curved. So if I just tear that a little bit and then I can turn my tape and tape it down there. So what I'm doing is just taping um, <clears throat> the head of the soldier that I want to to remove is really close to the E and the O. So I've just put a little bit of tape. I tore it at the top end and folded it over so that it would turn that corner there. So there's a tip. Now to decide what color to use, I may just use that. I was gonna use black, but I might just use the background color that I've used in, in that uh, green, Everett. So this is Fusion Mineral Paint color Everett. And I'm just offloading that on here on my piece of cardboard, making sure it's got hardly left, hardly any on it. And I'm actually just using the envelopes from Essential Stencil as my offloading cardstock. Okay, so make sure also this, because it's such a large brush, it could even go to the end to the top here. So I want to make sure I've taped off all of that because I don't want to accidentally, it's very close to the edge. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you know what? There's another bit over here that I need to tape off also. Looks like it's too close. Nope, not enough. And away we go. Now, if this was, if I hadn't already used this brush for this same color, I may have used another, another um, brush, like a smaller one. In fact, let's do a shadowing technique on this. And I might go over this with, maybe black would stand out. I would. I can't do white because it's a white background and it would all disappear, but to create this khaki or dark green as my shadow, it's a really nice army green actually, I feel like. Great for stenciling these kind of things. And this would look great. I will hopefully do this on my next project that I've got lined up here. How are we going for time? I need to get moving. So there's that, uh, and that would be good for our camo. That color is what I was going to say. Oh. Okay, so there's that. Remember our heroes. And if I do want to do a shadowing on that, I may do some kind of black, I think. So let's grab the coal black, although maybe, maybe it's not going to stand out as well. I might just leave it. I think I'll just leave that. Let's go on with our camo. And that was from the stencil set called American Veteran. And it complements very nicely the uh, women veteran stencil set as well. But all those are in the bundle. <coughs> okay, here's the notepad I found. So it's just got, you know, the kind like a cardboard cover on the on the top here's our other one we worked on and pop this in here now I'm not sure what color to start with darker color first or lighter color first I'm going to be creating a camo 
finish on this notepad. You could do both sides or just the top right side. Oops. Anyway, this one's called Camouflage Layering Stencil. Comes in three layers, and I've seen Amanda do this one uh, in different colours, which is beautiful. I love the colours she chose. So go back and check out Amanda's live, probably on her metal 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 modern designs site or page. Um, but this does have uh, it does have the layers. So we've got layer three written up there, and layer one written here, and layer two will be right in the middle. And I remember Amanda showed what it's like with just using two layers and then using three. So you can have an option there of using just um, two layers or add a third layer. So, and you could use a great big, this would work perfect for a full letter size notebook or what we have in Australia, we call them A4, A5 size, A4. Uh, so I'm just going to use a portion of this, but here's layer one. So let's see how that works. And we do have the cross registration marks up the top as well. But because I'm doing it on here, I'm not sure how I'm going to line that up. <laughs> All right. And now this is going close to that spiral. I don't want to put it over here because then it doesn't, the pattern doesn't start till here. And I want it to kind of go as much as I can over that side. Let's kind of just move it real close. And maybe I can at least have a little cross right here. And again, I'll just use my pencil. So can you see that cross registration mark right in the corner there? If I just lay that there and just do my cross mark there, then I can erase that pencil mark when we're finished. So that'll give me a bit of a line up idea. So, um, did anyone say, <laughs> Bobby says it looks like a cow. It does. If you're just using the one pattern, you can absolutely use it like a cow pattern. Um, oh, Vic, thank you. Shades are up to the, oops, my comments disappears. But I think you said you can do either. Go from light to dark, dark to light. So I've got three different colors. We've got that Everett color. We've got Carriage House. And then we've got this dark, dark color called Wellington. What else did I have? I've got the Woodwick color. We could even add a brown in there, but this Wellington color is even darker. It's almost like a blacky, blacky green. Let's start with dark and end up light. I think that might be a go. And <clears throat> remove my little tab there. Oops. It's gotten stuck to the lid. It's going to make a mess. Okay, well, we've got a great little bit of paint on that lid that I could just use. And <clears throat> I'm going to choose a smaller size again. This is a half inch brush and dip that into my paint. This is the color, what did I call it? Wellington. Wellington. So it's a very dark, and you'll be able to see on my cardstock here, it's kind of close to the Everett color, but darker. So I've got my thing lined up there, the cross at the top, and I'm just going to pounce on there. Yes, Erin, great idea. If you do go light to dark, you could even use the same brush. Great tip. So going on cardboard is different than going over wood or going over paint. And sometimes cardstock takes a little bit more paint. <clears throat> okay, so this one, I'm trying to push it down to be... Um, Butting up next to those spirals is not always great. It'll go a little bit faster as we move towards the other part of these blobs, shall we call them? The other part of the camouflage. Each time I'm just being very careful just to push it down carefully. 
when you're going up next to something it's good to just kind of get the stencil going in from the edges and here we can do this little part quite easily and we can go round and round and it really doesn't matter if you're you know filling in a full solid coverage I think it looks great with just the um, rough rustic swirling to where it's not completely solid color I think that's just fine I'm just being so careful not to move it probably would be easier on a much larger notebook surface These are a great journal size though, I think. Christy says, I wonder if you can mask off the dog tags. Might be able to do that. You may find on those boots though, let's have a look. You may find that you might still have to fill in, if you do mask them off, you might have to fill in some laces by hand. If you've got the detail brushes that could work and then sort of copy the opposite boot that doesn't have the dog tags on it. You could do a little copy of that to remind you of your daddy's work boots. That is so sweet. That's a great idea. The small boots I noticed in that set don't appear to have dog tags. Well, Maybe they are. They just look a little bit different. They sort of blend into the shoelaces on that one anyway. I love how the boot sign turned out too. I think I'm happy with that. I don't always know what it's going to turn out like because I don't ever really practice what we're doing before we go live. A lot of the times we're working on the fly trying to get other things done <laughs> and we come up with these ideas the night before or maybe I've thought of the idea the week before but haven't had a chance to try it out. Oh there is an old set of boots from last year in the Stencil of the Month Club. I think that's correct. It may have even been one that Melissa had helped design that boot set, I think. I can't remember. In the Stencil of the Month Club. So if you were in it back then. Okay, so I've done that. This one probably could do with a little bit more right there. So we've got that fun print on the front so far. So, so far it looks like cow print, right? <laughs> So then we're going to add something. I don't know if these colors are a little bit too close. They look very similar. Maybe I could add just a fraction of uh, different green for this lighter color. This is Everett. So then we're going to go Carriage House after that. So that's a different color green there. Uh, there was another green too, but I didn't bring it out. I just have a feeling that this Everett is very close. Let's see. Oh, I did have that on another brush, so I could try that. Okay, let's get organized. Put this in here. We've got our layer number two. So make sure you pick up the next layer. It says layer two at the top etched in there. And remember how I put a little pencil mark where the registration mark crosses. So I'm going to line that up now to exactly where it needs to go. I could put this brown in between that and the green. That could work too if I think this is a bit too dark because you want it to contrast a little bit don't we? Should we try the brown or just go with this dark Everett green? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do the Everett green because I'm helping you guys out here. If you see that this doesn't work, then don't do this. <laughs> Try a different color. Okay, so I've lined up my registration mark here, holding my hands down. It's going to be all different patterns all over. I've got now working on layer two. Yeah, it's slightly different color. 
It is still dark, but you may be able to tell the difference. We'll see. Holding it down with my fingers carefully on those ends there. Yeah, this one's more green. The other one looked a lot like really dark grey with maybe a green undertone. Like a charcoal-y kind of grey. Holding still. This is where um, when you brush, when it's close there, if you're brushing sideways, it really wouldn't work. So you've got to sort of do like a pounce and wriggle manoeuvre. Let's call it that. Pounce and wriggle. Come back up here now for this bit. I kind of need something under here too to lift that. That would be helpful, but I don't have that right now. So I'm going to actually just have to put up with painting my fingers, which happens. It happens. And then holding this down close to the... See how much I've still got left on that brush? I've because it's such a large brush it's going a long way and because I'm now swirling it and wriggling it in there we're still going with that same color <clears throat> letting go for a brief second just to fill that last bit in oh I really didn't need that I've got a whole lot over here on my brush <clears throat> Oh, welcome to anyone who's new here today. Yes, please make our newcomers feel welcome. If you're brand new and you've never tried stenciling before, or uh, let us know in the comments. Or if you've ordered us your very first set of stencils and you're going to wait and um, can't wait to try them out, let us know you've ordered your first set. Um, and if you've ordered and you still have are stuck and not confident enough to stencil, please just give it a try. I always suggest doing it on a piece of cardboard or um, paper first. Cardboard is good because it's a little bit more solid. Let's see how that turned out. Oh, I can just barely see the dark in the background. So you may or may not want to do that, but that's okay. It still looks a different color. I can tell. Maybe you can't tell so much by the, by the um, screen there, the video screen. Put that layer two aside and let's grab layer three in our camouflage set. And layer three is going to sit right on top of that. Now that you'd make sure that's completely dry first, which because I've used a dry brush, hardly anything on the brush, then it is going to be quite dry. Okay, so this is the color Carriage House and that's another shade of green and it's a much lighter green. So I'll use a different brush again for that. Again, using a small half inch brush. Oh, actually, I don't need to use a smaller one. We'll use a 5 8 again. Okay, lining up my stencil registration mark, this little cross right there in the corner. And here we go with our third layer. And getting some carriage house color on the brush. And this is a lot lighter, this green. So we've gone from dark to quite dark as well but still a bit of a contrast to this lighter color so this will really bring out the different shades oh Vic I'm glad you can see the different shades yep and that is the idea of camo thank you for your encouragement <laughs> okay this one's a lot lighter so yeah um, you can do these in any color that you like I've seen it done I think Amanda did blue the other day uh, you can do it in pink. I've seen some beautiful pink camo things over the years. What about what else? You could do pastel camo in like a pastel greens. Holding tight. So those registration marks really are a great key to getting these camos lined up to where they look like they make sense. And Essential Stencil, again, has done a great job in getting 
in coming up with these layered stencil ideas. We've seen a few layered stencils this year, even a couple last year at Christmas time, and they really do help to lift your game when it comes to being an artist <laughs> because an artist I don't feel like I am because I can't draw or paint pictures but I feel like I've still got some kind of creativity there that I can or I've learned anyway how to put colors together I paint furniture and upcycle different pieces of furniture and kind of get a vision about what they could look like you'd love to see some of that you are so welcome to join me over on my blog which is irestorestuff.com my website here and you can check out all the fun makeovers I've done with furniture or home decor or some of my signs for some inspiration of what you might want to do to make over your own house household furniture instead of buying new sometimes those pieces that we've already got at home uh, really nice solid wood not uh, junky wood like are so often sold today is that right like some of our older pieces of furniture are nice good solid pieces so instead of just getting brand new sometimes it just takes um, you know stripping off the old um, layering or you know not even stripping off sometimes if you just want to repaint you really don't need to strip off the old paint so much you just need to give it a good clean a good wiping down and I've got tips for prepping your piece of furniture before you paint it over on my blog um, if you just go to the tab there that says learning to paint and there's a start here kind of feature that you can just get all the tips you need to paint your own furniture and I do use the fusion mineral paint a lot because that's a really it's actually formulated especially for furniture uh, and it's very eco-friendly so you can even paint indoors and not be concerned about fumes or you know breathing in toxic chemicals and that kind of thing so that's really a great quality product and this if you missed it is the color carriage house I'm holding that still last little bit here and we're almost done our camo and this is a gorgeous notebook oops Pop my lid back and looks like we've run out of time to do my third project so we'll have to do that I'll have to save it for next time <clears throat> so we have used a whole bunch of stencils today not a whole bunch of uh, sets but just a few different stencils because we've had layers and layers layers upon layers so we've layered the camo look at that I love how that turned out how cool now you could use that as a background also so you could add something like one of these sign you know signs on here you could even add a whole um, what do you call it a silhouette you could add the thank you veterans over the top of that there's so many different options you could use on some of these um, you know <coughs> so and you could it, it could even work too for the women woman veteran uh, signs as well and also this one nation under God it's also got the God family country or the cross that you could put in the middle with the flag in just some really bright red white and blues which would really contrast and stand out nicely against the camouflage there so I hope you enjoyed those um, oh you could outline the boots on it yes you could Mary that's a good idea too let me see where's that boots one there's the boots there so you could do that as well have a try have a play with your stencils if you're really in doubt about what would work and what wouldn't work grab a piece of the cardstock that comes inside your stencils and have a go layer things on top of there if the, I've also cut it in half before and done a size this assigned this size or this size and then if they work out great you can actually frame it put that cardstock in a frame and you've got yourself a gorgeous little piece of home decor 
let me just point you up here and let's see if we can grab some winners for our um, gift card giveaway today. And now if you are watching the replay, you can comment the word replay in the 24 hours after we've gone live and still get a chance to win some a gift card there, $20 gift card. So don't forget, uh, use my code IRESTOREStuff for 10% off. That's a further 10%. So the bundle, if you get the whole bundle, if you pre-order the whole bundle, is 20% off. So you get all of those stencils, 17 sets of stencils. I haven't even showed you them all today. I only showed you two sets, two or three. Um, then you add stack my code I restore stuff on top of that and you save an extra 10% plus you get a $20 gift card in the bundle itself, an e-gift card so that you can use that on uh, future purchases. And if you do order that via the app, you also get some brushes, I do believe. So here's what we did today. We did our Remember Our Heroes boots and we've got the copper dog tags there. You could do them brass, you could do them bronze, whatever colours you like, but that's a fusion metallic colours. If you need my fusion mineral paint code, you can use iRestore stuff. If you need the link, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to look that up in a minute after we've gone live and um, send that through to you. So let me see, let me see, our, oh, just let me hold those up again and I will um, See who there our winners are. Our winners are Teresa, Teresa Salmond, Tammy Reed, and Terry McGurk. So Teresa, Tammy, and Terry, all T names today. Teresa, Tammy, and Terry. You were our winners today for our live. Congratulations. You've won yourselves a gift card that you can spend at Essential Stencil. Can't wait to see what you do with that and can't wait to see you guys uh, stencil some of these patriotic bundle signs. So two days left. Don't forget, use my code I restore, I restore stuff, save on the bundle. Um, but you can also use my code and order these individually if you like. I can't wait to see you next week. See what we've got planned for next week. Bye. See you for Bye for now. <laughs>